Amar Adonai Savot Elohe Israel. That's 12 year old Naomi Hawkman of Winnipeg practicing chanting her Haftorah. Her bat mitzvah is coming up on March the 19th. The day school student is busy putting the final touches on her speech for her big day at Sharazetic Synagogue. Hawkman is the first girl in her family to have a bat mitzvah. Her older brothers had bar mitzvahs, and she just took it for granted she was going to have one too. Her ceremony, though, comes on the same weekend as the 100th anniversary of the first bat mitzvah ever held in North America. It was 1922, and it was Judith Kaplan, the daughter of an American Reconstructionist rabbi, who was the first girl to have one. Bat mitzvahs, as we know them today, didn't really start in Canada until many decades later, in 1949, and it was Miriam Leaf of Ottawa. She was the daughter of a synagogue president, and she became the first Canadian girl to have a bat mitzvah. Leaf paved the way for generations of girls to take a more egalitarian role in Jewish religious life in this country. I knew it was the first in my synagogue, the first in Ottawa, and probably the first in the conservative movement for many miles around us. But I didn't know it was the first in Canada at the time. I only knew that my father was working very hard to establish this. And um, he was a pioneer. I'm Ellen Besner, and this is what Jewish Canada sounds like for Tuesday, March the 8th, 2022, International Women's Day. Welcome to the CJN Daily, sponsored by Metropia. There are formal photos showing Miriam Leaf in her bat mitzvah dress posing with her family in 1949 in a series of books called Gathering Rosebuds. The author of that series was Miriam's father, the late Mr. Justice Abraham Leaf. He was my grandfather, and Miriam is my aunt. Isn't that cool? And I only discovered she was a Canadian pioneer for bat mitzvahs thanks to a historian in Montreal, Hannah Sruer, who suggested that we put together an episode to mark the 100th anniversary of the first bat mitzvah in North America. So coming up, 86-year-old Miriam Leaf and 12-year-old Naomi Hockman will be here to share their experiences as Benot Mitzvah. But first, here's what's making news elsewhere in Canada right now. I'm Sharon Cohn in Massachusetts, and this is what Jewish Canada sounds like. Three Canadian rabbis have flown to Europe to get a first-hand look at the needs of Ukrainian refugees flooding into Poland. The rabbis are all from the Montreal area, and they landed in Warsaw Monday for a lightning fact-finding tour. Rabbis Ruben Pupko, Mark Fishman, and Adam Shire are touring the reception centers housing Jews from Ukraine who have managed to get out of their besieged country and will bring you some of their eyewitness stories. We hope to speak with them later this week on the CJN Daily. Meanwhile, the Jewish community of Kitchener-Waterloo in Ontario has raised over $15,000 so far to help the Jews in Mariupol. They held a rally Sunday and heard some reports coming from the rabbi of that city that the situation is dire. He says there's no running water. People are trying to capture rainwater for drinking and washing. And they heard about a woman who went to a deserted grocery store hoping to find something for her kids to eat. And she managed to unearth three chocolate bars. And joining us now from Winnipeg are Naomi Hawkman and from Florida, Miriam Leaf. And we're also joined by Miriam's younger sister, Lois Leaf. She's 84 and she's my mom. And she was supposed to be the second girl in Ottawa to have a bat mitzvah. From what we know, and maybe you know, Miriam, you were the first girl in Canada to have a bat mitzvah. Would you tell us about the date? the time and, uh, you know, did you know that you were the first one? I knew that I was the first one in our city. I knew I was the first one in the conservative movement in our city because my father founded the synagogue. And my bat mitzvah was in conjunction with with the opening of a new building for Good of Israel. It was their second home in Ottawa. Uh, We had just hired a new rabbi, Rabbi Margolis. I didn't even know him, really. And um, it was in March of 1949. I was almost 14, because by the time the synagogue was opened, my father wanted to coordinate, so I was past my 13th birthday. Did you want a bat mitzvah, Miriam? I didn't even know what it was. I was quite well educated. I wasn't in any way afraid of what I was going to do. Um, 
I complied, you know, I, my father wanted me to do it and um, for his synagogue, which was very important to him. And I did it. And um, how did I feel? I, I, when all the kids were sitting in the back row, looking at me in my long white dress, I was totally embarrassed. I thought they were looking at me like I was some queer person doing this. But after at the reception, they told me how amazing they thought that the whole thing was. And then I felt a lot better. I did the whole Friday night service plus a sermon. And I'm going to let um, Lois talk about uh, hers. You were supposed to be the second in Ottawa. Mine was April the 6th, uh, 1951. It was Shabbat HaChodesh. Um, the second one, uh, was uh, Dorothy Wexler, now Dorothy Tonshin. Um, I think my father felt that if it was going to be Miriam and then me, it might be the two Leaf sisters and over and out. And he really wanted to establish this as, as a feature of a good at Israel. Uh, the Wexlers had just moved from Montreal. Debbie was a Hebrew speaker. Uh, she was younger than I, but so she was the second. I believe hers was in nine, sometime in 1950. And I didn't wear a long white dress. I wore a pink dress and a pink hat, as I remember. And I, I followed the same procedure as Miriam, the, the uh, Kabbalat Shabbat, uh, Kiddush, and a sermon. You also had to wait until you were not I 12. was also almost 14, yes. But now we're going to turn to Naomi. Tell us your date. Tell us how you decided. Did you want a bat mitzvah? And how, how did it all come about? Um, so my date is March 19th. So coming up pretty soon, two weeks from now. Um, and yeah, I really wanted one. My brothers both had one. So I always knew I wanted one because I remember my brothers having a lot of fun and like having family members come out from out of town. And it was just a really exciting time, you know. You're doing a bit differently than uh, Miriam and Lois are, are, were able to do. Tell us what your whole, you know, synagogue involvement is. is, is. Um, so... I have a Saturday morning service and I get to do my half Torah. I do Torah portions, blessings, the whole service, basically. What about in your school? How is it now? You go to Jewish school in Winnipeg, right? Are there are lots of girls having bat mitzvahs and your friends and peers? Is something normal there? Uh, yeah, it's really normal. Actually, um, the week before my bat mitzvah, one of my best friends is having hers and there are, are loads of girls on my grade and the grades above me that are having. So it's, it's really common. It's as common as a guy having a bar mitzvah. Um, well, turn back to Miriam. You said that when, you know, you were standing up there in your dress doing your, doing your bat mitzvah, it was a Friday night just to make sure. Girls weren't allowed to do Saturday at that time. Was that, was that ever a question of doing Saturday or no, it wasn't? I couldn't have an aliyah. And the, um... I, I don't think women were on the Bema even. So this was totally foreign. And they thought they would try a Friday night because it would be acceptable. Yeah. As, as far as I know, um, the first Shabbat morning bat mitzvah in Canada was uh, Donnie Becker, as she was then Donnie Frank, whose father, Rabbi Levy Becker, had just started the first Reconstructionist uh, congregation in Montreal. And she did have uh, an aliyah and she did chant the Haftar. That was, I think, about 1953. Mm -hmm. So uh, Miriam and Lois, having a bat mitzvah, how did it shape you as the woman, the Jewish woman that you are today? Well, I loved Hebrew school. I was, um, we had a teacher named Jacob Gordon. Even though it was after school, it was twice a week and on Sunday and learned well. I think that perhaps in my class, Elaine Sloan and I knew more about the history and the language than any of the boys. We were quite good. So I went to synagogue with him every Shabbat for seven years. I got a prize. So um, I think my shaping me started way back before the bat mitzvah. And um, my grandchildren, my children and my grandchildren, um, they follow um, Judaism very closely to this day. And Lois, uh, tell us a bit about you, how it shaped you and your Judaism as a Jewish woman 
speaking about mitzvah? I think it was part of the path of my my whole life, you know, my upbringing, just to, you know, as Miriam intimated in hers, um, which has continued. Um, my children did have, but we were uh, in Ellen and Brenda both had uh, both became bat mitzvah. Now you are a lot different than uh, the the two um, pioneers who had theirs because you were having. A pandemic ish, but mitzvah. Yeah. yeah. Was yours even delayed because of the uh, social distancing? Can you talk a bit about the, the, the challenges? Um, well, I was actually going to have mine in Israel and last year, but COVID hit right before I was going to start my classes. And the rabbi just completely like cut off new classes. So I wasn't able to do that. And we had, we couldn't travel. So we didn't go to Israel. But Hopefully after my bat mitzvah, we'll get it to go there. Lois and Miriam, did you guys have like a party, you know, with the DJ and, you know, the whole no. photo booths like normally people have? What was your celebrations like first Lois and Miriam? It was the Friday night. There was a dessert kiddish after the, uh, the service and that was it. I didn't have a party. Miriam, what did you do for yours? It was a nonic and um I would say it was a you know pretty lavish onig. There was a lot of pastries. It was tea, coffee, and our friends were there too. I I don't even know how, if we got presents. Did we get presents, Snooky? I don't even yes. know. Yes. Yes. And are you going to be wearing a talit, Naomi? I am. I am. I'm using my mom's talit, but after my bat mitzvah, my mom is going to make a talit for me. And uh, Lois and Miriam, do you have any other, do you have questions for Naomi? I think Naomi, that both my sister and I would love to have been doing what you're doing because um, as we've gone through our life path, we've done this many times. My father was at my 65th birthday while I um, did a, you know, had an Aliyah and did a Haftorah also. I've done them in Palm Beach. I've done, you know, we like to do it. That's awesome. I did one in uh, in Boca about two weeks ago, on on, right. zoo, on Zoom. There were some people in shul and some people in, in their condos or at home, and uh, but it's quite normal. But Dad was pushing for, uh, you know, towards the inclusion of women, um, in in all facets of synagogue life, and not just you know, in a secondary role. Beautifully done. So here's what I think we should do. I think you should invite us three to come by Zoom. We would be honored to come to your bat mitzvah. I know that sounds schnorry, but it didn't mean it that way because I think that it would be so honored to have that opportunity to see you shine after we've met you. And, and I hope you'll consider on live TV saying yes. Absolutely. I, I would love Absolutely. to do that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. That'll be well, great. Of and that's what Jewish Canada sounds like for this episode of the CJN Daily, sponsored by Metropia. Integrity, community, quality, and customer care. We want to send a hearty shout-out and mazel tov to Naomi Hawkman and to her family for their upcoming simcha. And I just want to say I still remember how to chant the opening sentence of my bat mitzvah haftorah. Actually, my sister and I both had Saturday morning bat mitzvahs. I wasn't allowed to have my own aliyah, though. My father had to do the aliyah for me. I don't remember much about the bat mitzvah because I was sick as a dog. I had 103 fever from tonsillitis. But we'll end the episode with this clip of Rabbi Tina Grimberg of Toronto. She herself fled the USSR in 1979 via Ukraine, and she spoke at a national online service for the refugee organization, Jaius. Seeing people homeless, panicked, sudden, pale, hurried, lining up totally in place of unknown and sorrow brought back many memories. In May of 1979, my family tried to board the train in Western Ukraine that headed for Vienna, Austria. We were stateless, we were frightened, Vulnerable Soviet Jews, along with thousands of others, tried to leave Soviet oppressive regime in search of a new home. We wanted to be free Jews, proud, unashamed, secure. 
The Iron Curtain prevented us from knowing what light ahead. But there is something we knew, one thing. One thing for certain, the Jews on another side were helping Jews. That made all the difference. Thank you.